Uh, hi everyone, I'm going to present our work called FANS, an FPGA accelerated near storage sorting solution. So large scale sorting is always an important yet demanding task in the data center. And unlike the internal sorting problem, where the data can fit directly into the system DRAM, sorting large scale data set relies on the external sorting, where the storage devices are usually presented to store the intermediate and final results. And one of the most widely used large scale sorting algorithm is the external merge sort, which has two phases. In the sorting phase, we first sort the data into DRAM scale trunks. And then in the merging phase, we merge these DRAM scale trunks together into the final result. And we find that the external merge sort is a suitable application for near storage computing devices such as the newly released Samsung Smart SSD. Why? Because we can accelerate the computation intensive sorting phase with customized FPG accelerator while avoiding the unnecessary data movement between the host and the storage. Uh, Samsung Smart SSD is a computational storage that contains a dialing FPG with a four gigabyte CDID RAM, as well as a NAND flash in the same package. It is also equipped with a PCI Gen 3 times 4 lens to support the near storage computation. Smart SSD has a new FPG and SSD communication feature called P2P transfers. With P2P, the data can be transferred between the SSD and the FPG DRAM and uh, bypass the host. However, the P2P commands still rely on the host to issue. So although there are no complete near storage sorting solutions, there do have a few conventional FPGA based flash sorting designs. And as is listed in the table below, um, all of them have very limited analysis on the bottleneck by claiming that the slow IO is the only limitation. And besides the platform they use are deviated from the practical near storage devices. For example, the IO, the PGA DRAM and the, the corresponding programming model. And all of these factors could impact the actual implementation of the near storage sorting system. And in this work, we want to address a few questions or challenges. First, how to implement a complete sorting design on practical near storage devices, such as smart SSD with the practical con constraints and the, the consideration of the end-to-end performance. Second, what are the key factors that determine the overall sorting performance? Is the slow IO just the only bottleneck or given the fixed IO, how can we further tune the design choices? Last but not least, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the existing near storage devices? So basically we want our work to be a case study to show how to further improve the smart SSD architecture. Uh, the fundamental sorting operations can be easily parallelized on FPGAs. So on the left side figure, we show the well-known bitonic merger. So it takes two sorted arrays A and B and do the parallel comparison. And after fixed number of cycles, it will output the sorted sequence. And if the arrays to be merged is longer than the width of the bitonic merger, then we have to add extra control logic on top of the bitonic merger to select which portion of the arrays to be output first. And on the right side is an example of the complete parallel merger that output four elements per cycle from the two arrays. And with these parallel mergers, we can build a complete binary tree, which we call the merge tree. The merge tree can be uniquely defined by its root throughput P and the number of leaves L, for example. In the left figure, the tree root output two elements per cycle, and it has eight leaves. So we define the merge tree as P equal to, P equal to two and L equal to eight. And given a merge tree to sort n elements in the DRAM, we can easily get its performance model. So basically it takes a log base L, a number of passes to get all the elements to be sorted. And on the other hand, 
The effective throughput is the minimum of the tree throughput, which is a p times of the uh, times the design frequency times the record width or the available DRAM bandwidth. So with this background, let's see how we can implement the fence system on the smart SFD. The APJ kernel in both the sorting phase and the merging phase is a merge tree. So we have a merge tree work with the uh, APJ DRAM through the standard exit burst mode. And uh, since each exit transaction is 512 bit wide, so we have to decouple one element per time to fit it into the corresponding leaf, leaf node. And uh, we also have a pre-sorter inserted into the exit read pipelines that can sort the 512 bit exit data in order so that we can potentially reduce the number of passes. Last but not least, for each leaf node, we also have a corresponding buffer that catches at least two full exit bursts. And we make sure that each leaf buffer has an equal chance to access the DRAM. So using the metric kernel in the sorting phase, a natural design choice is that we sort the data for multiple passes in the DRAM before we write them back to the SSD. Why? Because the APJ DRAM bandwidth is uh, much larger than the I/O bandwidth. So, for example, in the first in the in the first pass, the sorting kernel will read the unsorted data from the read buffer zero in the figure, and write the partially sorted data into the right buffer zero. And in the next pass, the kernel will read the partially sorted data from right buffer zero and write the longer partially sorted data into the read buffer zero and so on and so forth. Moreover, we also apply the double buffering techniques to overlap the sorting execution with the SSD access. For example, from the host side, we will see three threads in the figure. So one of the kernel threads is sorting the data with a set of read buffer zero and write buffer zero. And at the same time, the P2P read and write threads do the work of the SSD access with the read and the write buffer one. So for the next chunk of the data, the kernel will work with the read and the write buffer one, while the P2P read and write works with the read and write buffer zero. So in the merging phase, things are a little bit different because the DRAM cannot hold the entire data. So every time we have to fetch a small batch from each sorted trunk to the DRAM. And each batch will go through the merge tree for only one pass before we write them back to the SSD. And whenever a batch is fully consumed by the merge tree kernel, we need to suspend the kernel and fetch the next batch from the same trunk. For example, in this figure, the first batch from sorted trunk two is already consumed. Then we have to suspend all of the merging operations and fetch the second batch from the sorted trunk too. So that means even if the merge in the merging phase, the tree configuration is the same as the sorting phase, it will have different requirements on the host and FPJ interface because it needs to tell the host which buffer is already empty so that the host can issue the corresponding P2P read. So in other words, we have to do the reprogramming to switch from the two phases. And for the sorting phase, assume the trunk size we sort is big N, then the kernel time can be calculated in the way we described it before. Since we go from the sorted array of size small n after the pre-sorter, it will take log base L1, big M of a small n number of passes, so that the kernel performance is the effective throughput divided by the number of passes. And for the entire n size data, we calculate the total time as the number of trunks times each trunk the end-to-end -end time. And this end-to-end -end time is the size of the trunk divided by the end-to-end -end performance, where the end-to-end -end performance is the minimum of the IO bandwidth and the kernel performance, because we already, we already applied the double buffering techniques. And for the merging, path, merging phase, 
since the data in the DRAM are going through the metric by only one pass, the kernel performance will be the effective throughput. And the end-to-end -end merging performance is a minimum of the IO bandwidth and the kernel performance. And it will also take log base L2 and the big N over big M number of merge passes to merge these M size trunks into the big N size and final results. So we can also calculate the total time in the merging phase as T2. And now let's take a look at the optimized configuration for smart SSD. And we can see that smart SSD has an actual DRAM bandwidth of only around seven gigabytes per second. And since the actual tree leaf number is very limited, it usually takes more than two passes to sort megabyte scale data. So as a result, the kernel performance in the sorting phase is actually less than the IO bandwidth. So that is the end-to-end -end performance in this phase is bounded by the DRAM bandwidth, not the slow IO. And what makes things even worse is that the effective DRAM bandwidth available to the kernel is further reduced because this P2P transfers also consume the DRAM bandwidth. And the merging phase is a bit simpler. We can easily derive that the bottleneck is from the low IO bandwidth. So how to choose the right configuration for smart SSD? First, we need to choose the minimum required P1 and P2. For example, in the sorting phase, we only need to choose the minimum P1 that saturates the DRAM bandwidth. And after that, we maximize the choice of L1 and L2 because increasing L1 and L2 may always reduce the number of passes. And finally, we also need to choose the right sorted trunk size big M because reducing the M may reduce the sorting performance in the sorting phase. And on the other hand, increasing this M may reduce the number of merge passes in the merging phase. And by solving the equations with the real constraints, we derived an optimized configuration for smart SD when sorting 16 byte elements. And in the sorting phase, we have a P equal to two, L equal to 64 tree. And in the merging phase, we have another P equal to one, L equal to 64 tree. And we also choose the sorted trunk size M to be 256 megabytes. And here we list the performance breakdown when using the described configuration to sort 128 gigabyte data. And we can see the average performance in the sorting phase is only 1.5 gigabytes per second, which is much less than the roughly three gigabytes per second IO bandwidth. And this proves that in the sorting phase, the bottleneck is the kernel, not the IO. And in the merging phase, the actual performance is a bit less than the ideal performance. And we believe it is because the kernel is suspended too many times. And we also show that the reprogramming, reprogramming time is acceptable compared to the total time. Next, we also measure the impact of the P2P transfers on the effective DRAM bandwidth by performing a check experiment. We preload the data onto the DRAM. Then the pure sorting kernel performance is higher. So this indicated that if we can enable the APJ to directly stream the data into the flash via the PCIe, instead of the, its own DRAM, we can get another 20% speed up in the sorting phase. And finally, we also measure the benefits from the near storage acceleration as shown in the figure. Compared to the conventional SSD to host then to FPJ data pass. This P2P connection bypassing the host gives two times performance speed up. So besides, it also frees the CPU cycles and reduces the DRAM usage on the host side. So in short, there are several architectural takeaways. Take For the sorting system designer, we show that to design a working and efficient sorting solution on the current current near storage devices. The sorting phase and the merging phase have different interface requirements and different bottlenecks. So the reprogramming is needed. And we also show that 
given the Samsung Smart SSD, how to configure the merge tree and the sortage trunk size to get the best end-to-end -end performance. And for the new storage device vendor, we first proved that IO is still a bottleneck in the merging phase. However, we also show that although the capacity does not uh, impact the performance, the DRAM bandwidth could still be a bottleneck in some cases. So we anticipated that HBM could be a better alternative to the regular DRAM. Besides, although P2P is better than the conventional SSD to host to FPGA data paths, it is still desirable to stream the data onto the FPGA on chip directly to save the very limited DRAM bandwidth. So in summary, in this work, we present Sense, a high performance end-to-end -end sorting system on the Samsung Smart SD with a concrete analytical framework to model the external merge sort operations. Sense also serves as a case study to provide the architectural insights to help vendors further improve their uh, new storage computing devices. Sense is also able to sort hundreds of gigabytes data with a single smart SD device and is able to achieve more than three times speed up over the previous state of art. And that's all. Thank you for listening. And I'd like to take care of the questions.